What's up guys? Chapter 617 is out, and this is a continuation from last chapter, which is more lore. So finally, we're gonna see like what's going on behind these family heads and pretty much gonna see like why they are the way they are, like in the present time. So yeah, let's get started on this chapter. So the monster that Enkidu slayed in the last chapter is not actually dead. I mean, he kind of just uh, disabled him for a moment, but he came back up and Traumari actually had to save him with his little snake. So Enkidu does not know how to fight for shit. He literally just possessed a somewhat decent body, above average body, I guess, and he just does not know how to use it. Cause I mean, Enkidu has never fought before. He's literally just been in a jar and just trying to transform into people so Traumari can be happy. So when Traumari is like, do you know how to use Shinzu? And Kadu is like, sure I do. So he's trying to like appeal Traumari and make him happy. But I mean, as you can see here, he just puts a little water gun. He just sprays a little water gun in this ancient creature's face. And that's it. <laughs> the creature is like, what the hell was that? And then the creature just unleashes a huge attack and it's about to get Enkidu, but like Traumari keeps protecting him. And then Traumara is like, you know what, I'm gonna show you how it's done. And he fucking one-shots this guy, like, instantly with some of his irregular powers. So I guess to be fair with Enkidu, this is an ancient species, something related to rock, you know, something that these family leaders just wanted to get rid of and just, like, have them go extinct. Uh, maybe it's, like, not one of the dangerous, the most dangerous ones, but, I mean, it is some, one of those variants, so... Enkidu is impressed, obviously, because Traumar is his master, so he's got no other choice but to fawn over him. And to my surprise, Traumar is like already taking a liking to him. Like he's already getting attached to him. He's saying that he'll teach him things personally, like with his own his own first person teaching uh, to Enkidu. So he'll help him improve. And he's gonna treat him to stuff. You know what the fuck? So I, I don't really get this this bonding here. I mean, Traumari could have any friend that is a quote-unquote human, you know? He could have any friend. I mean, we've seen throughout this chapter, there's a lot of servants that are, look like humans. And I thought I thought Enkidu was like kind of a beast skin because he has like these horns. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what this... I'm, I'm really confused. Wait, if Traumari wanted a friend so bad, he, could, can't, he couldn't have a Towerborn that climbed with him. Uh, during his, his journey with the 13 great warriors be his friend or there wasn't anyone want to be Traumari's friend That's hard to believe man. I mean someone as strong and as potent as Traumari one of the 13 great warriors I mean they should not have a, a lack of friends and then I mean I don't know what changed with Enkidu like literally his physical appearance is the only thing that changed head-on just pretty much helped him get a body and that's it that's all head-on did he kind of like head-on is just kind of like changing things to where he sees fit, but he's not, he didn't actually like personally help Enkudu, you know what I'm saying? He didn't actually go out of his way and do something that broke the tower's rules to help him. He just advised him pretty much. So uh, all that changed with, with the, the blob is he just got a body, but he still thinks the same. His brain didn't change. He just possessed a body. So uh, Traumari is liking to him because he looks different is what I'm getting at. I don't get it. It just makes no sense. Why couldn't he possess a body all, after all his time? I mean, he had the ability. All he had to all he had to do was have someone tell him to possess a body, and that's it. Maybe Hadon chose a body that Traumari likes. Maybe Traumari does not just want Enkidu to look like I don't know a regular person. He wanted him to look like something specific. Anyway, I'm rambling on this point way too much. If you guys like understand what this means or what's going on. Please let me know in the comments below, but let's get back into this chapter review. So Traumari asked Enkidu like what the name of his body he took over was, and head on informed them of the, the name of the guy. So it's again, this guy, this Enkidu person, the original Enkidu, I, seems like he's just a regular person. I don't get it. I don't get why, why it's so important to know who this person was. But anyway, Traumari is like, so, do you recall the name of the person, and then Enkidu, like, says the name, and then he says that he's Lopobia Enkidu, so, okay, he already adopted Traumari's name. And then Traumari, he says th this very specific phrase, like, you have taken root in the vessel that was not given to you, so, like, you have stolen this body, please don't, like, break it. Uh, so I guess that means, like, Enkidu can't really just, you know, uh, get himself killed or put himself in harm's way because this is his 
body that uh, he like this is his main body I guess so this this Enkidu body is the main body and I guess the other bodies that he possesses like he can do what he sees fit with them he can break them kill them whatever I mean that's what I got from this I don't know if it's an actual like physical real thing that trauma means it or if it's a metaphor like to honor the body so that's another thing I don't really get because I mean we saw with Goro like Enkidu just fucking completely destroyed his body we saw flying heads flo flying around and Goro getting his fucking body sliced and torn apart and blown up so I mean Enkidu just fucking throws these guys bodies however he sees fit and then I mean Enkidu's original body the first time we saw him he, he, ha he still has a horn so I'm assuming this is just the main physical body of Enkidu. Like, if you kill his body, Enkidu dies as well. Um, man, I am really reading into the lines here of these of these little phrases. It could be nothing. It could be just Traumari just saying shit, just to sound smart. So, from this point onwards, Traumari is like this guy's best friend. So, he went from neglecting him 100% to just being buddy buddies with him. He is like giving him all his food, he's training him, he is like fucking close to this guy, tight as hell. And Traumari even goes to the extent of asking the administrator to grant this guy immortality. Holy shit. So changing from a blob to some guy with horns is all he needed to do to get on Traumari's good side. Damn, dude, you had the family leader of the Lopabia family ask the administrator to grant you immortality. That is crazy. That is freaking crazy. That is a 180 if I've ever seen one, man. Holy shit. So Trauma has been like really trusting of this guy and some of the other family leaders are like kind of warning Trauma. Like, hey, you gotta be careful this Enkidu because I mean, he was manufactured from this shady individual after all. Um, so yeah, just be wary of this, this Enkidu. I mean, he has mysterious abilities and he knows a lot of things. Like the, the workshop master put things in his head that he already knows, so. They're just kind of warning him, but Traumari, it like kind of blows him off, ignores him, and says that he's a real human and he's a surround. He's not gonna do anything bad to him. And I mean, to Traumari's like trusts, he's kind of right. Like even as readers, we see Enkidu's thoughts. Enkidu has not really been seen like plotting something behind his back. Um, so, I mean, Enkidu seems like he's trustworthy, I mean. He doesn't have anything malicious against Traumari. So Enkidu vows his life to Traumari and says that he will kill anything in his path. So I don't know if that's a second blessing he got from the administrator or if he got that later on. But I mean, the narrator says that everything seems to be going well until, well, this has been a, an underlying problem, which is this girl that Traumari has been seeing. And this kind of like puts a wrench into Enkidu and Traumari's relationship. So. One of these days, this girl, let me see if I can pronounce her name, Amyuse, I think that's how you pronounce it, Amyuse, probably going to be like five different pronunciations for like different people, but I mean, that's what a translator said, uh, Miu, M-I-U, like that's how you say it, so I don't know, uh, maybe I'm saying it wrong, I got no fucking idea, but I'm going to call her Amyuse, and well, this girl is like looking out the window, and Trauma is going to be here like in the palace one day. So this is kind of where like we see things taking a twist. So this is for for everyone here in this in this scene. So one of these days, Traumari is gonna meet up with this girl, and this girl is like one of the people that climbed along with him and the other people that the other regulars that climbed the tower. And like I guess th they've been getting into like an on and off thing. And I mean, I guess she noticed that. This Enkidu has been like getting close to Traumari and women, they get jealous. If they see like someone that they're kind of getting attention from, like not giving them their full attention anymore or not like simping after them or something, they're going to get upset and they're going to do another 180 and they're going to all of a sudden show interest in you. So now Amy Yu's is like loving Traumari. She's all of a sudden she fell in love with him. So before like she kind of had a distance from him, but now she's all into him. So. Wow, I wonder why. All of a sudden, this Enkidu comes into the picture, and now you want to be Traumari's bitch. So, now she wants to just be after Traumari, and I think Gustang is narrating this. I don't know. The narrator is really confusing. I don't get who the narrator is. It's The narrator is not objective. Like, for example, here. 
But since she came here, she has turned into a pathetic woman. This sounds like Gustang speaking. So, I mean, the narrator is someone here. I don't know if it's Enkidu, or I don't know if it's Gustang, but it, it is someone. I don't think it's just a generic narrator. So, let me know in the comments who you think the fucking narrator is. I think it's Gustang. So Gustang is like, well, the narrator is pretty much saying that all she's been doing is just staring outside the window, and I mean, uh, that's pretty boring. I mean, you got this strong tower born. I don't think she's in a regular, and she's just been doing this shit ever since. She's just just being a very boring woman. So, well, anyway, they start talking, and she starts like throwing little jobs at Enkidu. So she comes off as kind of a bitch, honestly, like for no reason. It's just for no reason. She's just just talking shit like first she calls she calls Enkidu a creature oh and then second she calls him Kadu like he says his, says his name like kind of like disrespecting him and then she says that uh, like trauma is playing with him so I don't know she has something against Enkidu and Enkidu has something against her uh I don't know but she's more she's more passive aggressive with it so like trauma is telling her that they're gonna announce that they have a house together and she's asking like, hey, who, who are you inviting? And Traumar is like, only the ones I like. So, I mean, that's important to keep in mind that we're not gonna see all the family leaders. So we're gonna see the family leaders that Traumar is like in good terms with. So there are some that he does not like personally. And later this chapter, we don't we don't see Jihad like coming in. So I guess uh, I'm kind of surprised because I mean, Jihad is like his best friend. Uh, there's that. Maybe he's too busy ruling the tower as king. Maybe he doesn't have time for this, even if it's Traumarai. So anyway, so they start talking about Enkidu, and Traumarai just refers to him uh, as a friend. So like, of course, Enkidu is going to be there. And I mean, it doesn't look like Traumarai is really plotting anything against Enkidu. And he even sees him like as a human that's not controlled by him. So uh, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I'm in weird, weird terms with Traumarai just having this guy as his new best friend just because he looks different and then Amy says something she says something kind of cryptic and she says I'm gonna just quote it here I hope you don't screw it up I don't want to be mean but good luck with that so it looks like Traumarai has a history of like, having a friend and then like uh, he just does something fucked up and he pisses the friend off and it ends up bad and it looks like there's been incidents like that that happened in the past and all these uh, warriors are aware of it. So Traumarai gets up and Amu starts doing her typical woman manipulation tactics and she asked she asked Traumarai just the the question, the question that you always got to say yes to. And she asked him, "Do you still love me?" And Traumarai is just thinking about it and he just plays kind of like not simp, but he just, he plays along with it. He's like, yes, I do love you. What kind of question is that? So this obviously was just a big shit test. Women always do this. I mean, what are you going to say? If you're in a relationship with a woman and they ask you a stupid fucking question like this, you got, you, dude, you don't have a choice. You don't have a choice. You gotta, there's only one fucking answer. I mean, I'll, I'm not gonna fully bash a woman here. It's just a shit test. They just want to see how you react. They, they know the answer is gonna be yes because you got no fucking choice. But you, they just want to see how you react and how long you take to respond. Like they want to notice the small things. Oh, and your body language. So, of course, she's putting up these shit tests and trauma is just blowing through them. And as soon as Trimer comes out uh, of that little room talking with this uh, girl, uh, Enkidu's out there and he's like, Trimer, you gotta be careful. You should know that she has she has contacts from outside the tower, that she uses birds to contact these people or this person or these entities from outside the tower. So yeah, that that is a big red flag. That, holy shit, dude. That's like, if you're hanging out with a girl and she keeps getting fucking messages and she keeps like texting someone while you're with her and she doesn't give a fuck if you're next to her, that's pretty much the equivalent of this, dude. She, she is texting people from outside the tower and she's not telling you about it. So you're gonna marry this bitch and you're not gonna ask her, hey, who, who are you texting? Who are you messaging from outside of the tower? Who, what are you planning here? For all you know, she could be planning to fucking betray her ass. Because you're an irregular, so obviously you got more leverage, but... 
I mean, she's got the contacts from outside the tower. Something that you're not doing or you don't have ability. You don't have the ability to. So that's a huge red flag, Tramurai. That's a huge red flag. And Enkidu, all he's trying to do is pull you out of this rut. You are in love or something, but you're not thinking straight, dude. You got to think fucking straight. And Enkidu is over here trying to fucking pull you out and you're not, you're not listening. And while Enkidu is just trying to help his friend out, Tramurai basically tells him to shut the fuck up. Because Tramurai is in love, and the way Tramurai sees this relationship is completely innocent. It's all roses and sunshine, guys. Nothing wrong is going on. Nobody's planning to betray anyone. It is all, like, completely the best. Like, nothing wrong is happening here. And Tramurai, so yeah, he tells him to shut up, pretty much. And he says this, specifically. Haven't I told you before? Don't take an interest in us. And Enkidu just stays quiet. So, Tramurai seems to have told Enkidu before, like, things before, and Enkidu seems to have been, he, he seems to have been harping on some shit. He seems to have, like, to have been, like, telling Tramurai, like, hey, you need to be careful, like, with this woman. And Tramurai just got fed up with it, because he's really gonna marry her, so, I mean, he's not gonna tolerate that shit much longer. So, Enkidu, Enkidu's, like, kinda sad, because he's kinda sad, because Tramurai, despite how close he's been with him, he still doesn't see him like as a true friend like as uh, he doesn't have that type of bond that he does with other irregulars so he's always gonna be second fiddle he's always gonna be uh like an inferior being um which fucking sucks i mean at this point you would think enkidu's gonna break down he's gonna be fucking pissed but he's not because enkidu does the contrary he wants to be Tramurai's best friend. He wants to be at that same level of trust and bond that they that he has with the other irregulars and people that climbed with him up at the tower. So Enkidu is very like this guy. This guy is like very loyal. This guy just will not betray Tramurai. And from the reader's perspective, we see the thoughts right of of these people. So. It looks like Enkidu is just completely 100% on board. There's no, there's no foreshadowing for him to betray Tramurai. Like, if he doesn't want, he doesn't have any ill will or anything. It's just he just wants, he wants to be his friend. That's pretty much all he wants. So after like all this monologue I just discussed, we see Enkidu. He like shrinks back into a cube, so his original form, but this time he has the real Enkidu body inside him. So. I take it as this is his real body that if he damages, it's like, it's over pretty much. So he just, yeah, he kind of like shrinks. He just shrinks like into like the, the jar again. I don't know why he keeps going in this jar. The fuck? What's so special about this jar? But yeah, he shrinks and he's just in this cube and he just keeps following Tramurai. So I get where he's, I get how he's just a toy friend, as he says. And he's... He just has to keep following Tramurai around. Like, he's basically his, his toy. I mean, that's what he is. And with Gustang and Are Han, like, they see each other on equal footing. Like, they don't... You don't see fucking Gustang, like, following Tramurai and serving him or being talked down to him like this. So, I, I kind of see... I, I kind of see where he's going with this, but... Tramurai is just a dick. Tramurai is just a dick. I mean, that's, that's what it comes down to. And Tramurai is not going to respect him... He will never respect him the way he wants to be like respected or treated as. But Enkidu, Enkidu is still gonna obey him and you know be a servant. So time passes and they are ready for the party. So everyone's ready for the party. Enkidu and Trauma are seen talking together, and Trauma is asking him like, "Hey, how are how is everything going? Are the preparations like met and all this shit?" So. Yeah, Trauma Tra is kind of like he wants this to go perfect. He does not want anyone to fuck up. And he even threatens Enkidu with, like, death. Like, the, the people that are coming in, they'll kill him if he, they don't like, like, what he says or he looks at them the wrong way or something like that. So, basically, Tramurai wants his shit to go right. He doesn't want any problems or anything like that. And Enkidu is basically acting as a hype beast. He's, like, saying, man, this is going to be the best party ever. You're going to be happy. And, like, you know, he's, he's hyping this shit up. And as they're speaking... Amuse is already there. She is already there. And I think Amuse, she kinda has that that cunt face. She kinda has that cunt face, guys. Let's let's be honest. She looks like she's gonna backstab your ass. She's gonna backstab your ass in like any minute. 
and she looks way too jubilant, way too excited, happy. I basically use the same word in three different ways. But anyway, she she just looks way too overconfident. And I don't trust her at all. Just seeing her facial expressions. She's just way too cocky. And she just doesn't seem like someone you would see getting like betrayed. She's gonna she looks like she's the one that's gonna be doing the betraying, but the same is not gonna happen to her. So we, uh, before I move on to the next scene, we see Enkidu saying like this is gonna be the best marriage proposal ever, and Tramai just says Enkidu, shut up. So I see this as like a little bit of humor. I guess this is like well, there's a little there's humor sprinkled throughout this chapter actually, but I, I see I see this as Enkidu actually being happy for Tramai. He doesn't want to fuck this up. He wants to see his buddy happy. And this could be contributing, the, the contributing factor of this could be that Enkidu is trying to, like, be a true friend. He's just trying to do whatever Tramrai does to make him happy so Tramrai can finally see him as a real true friend. But unfortunately, I don't think Enkidu is ever going to get that treatment and he is just going to be following this lie until something bad happens. Real quick, I haven't really like gone to any theories. I just realized I was gonna say something earlier, but I fucking forgot. But it came back now. So, real quick, before we move on to the next scene, since I mean it just kind of ended the scene that I was talking about. It ended. Uh, I think Amy Yu's is like an Icarus. I think she is the Icarus because Icarus like caused division. Icarus caused problems. There are prophecies of Icarus in these books, and she has connections to the outside of the tower. I think this is Icarus, because Icarus seems like she would stir up the pot, and she would get people in trouble. So, real quick, I think Amy Yu's is Icarus. That is my theory. So, getting into the next scene, we see lightning come out of nowhere, and it is no one other than Edwan, Kun Edwan, and he has two guys behind them. So, I don't know if these are like his firstborn direct descendants. The guy on the left looks very familiar. I, I just don't recall. I don't I don't know if it's a different character from another show or what, but he just looks familiar. And right next to him is Arie Han. And Arie Han is like, hey, why are you doing all this flashy shit? Like every time you do, every time you go somewhere, you're like flashing stuff. So it's kind of funny. Uh, I I thought the the lightning was like something that just happened. I didn't know it was a fucking Kuna Duan just throwing up a light show. So, yeah, these guys kind of have banter with each other. Ari Han is, like, a little annoyed, but he's just messing with him in the grand scheme of things. And like, They got these guys. They got these guys. Ari Han has these two guys behind him. So, I don't know if these are, like, their kids or if these, these are their followers. They're followers from the, 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 great, the great travel from floor 0 to floor 134. I don't, I don't know. Uh, I'm looking at Arya Han's guys. The guy behind him is like all wrapped up, and he's got like these two swords. Uh, I don't know if this is some guy from like the blog posts or something, but this could very well just be uh, uh, Towerborn because it does not look anything like Arya Han except for having the swords and having his his body all bandaged and and white. So. I don't know. Let me guy. Let, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Who these guys are that are following these family leaders? We also see Yeon Ring uh, that she's invited to this party as well. So I guess she has like her own group. It's like a bunch of females. I mean, that's, uh, all of a sudden it cuts from her to so, like all these females, and they're all fawning over these two guys, Han and uh, Edwan. So yeah, I mean, I guess these are her followers. All these females, I don't know. Uh, is she the, the feminist one? I don't know, I, guys. I haven't read the fucking SIU blogs, and I don't really want to because he removed them. Like, first of all, he removed them, and second of all, I I don't know. I just never got got the drive to read all his fucking blogs. I think SIU should have. Instead of spreading the lore out through his blogs, he should have just kept everything in the story. That just makes it a little messy, but that's off topic here. Uh, yeah, so we also get uh, Gustang here. So it's these four family leaders. Actually, I think it's five. Five family leaders, because Blossom was supposed to show up. But Gustang gets a notification from someone that she didn't show up because she was sleeping. So I guess Blossom and Gustang were already together at this point. 
Um, so I guess five of these guys they were they were invited to Ramrai's party, and like I said earlier, Jihad is in here, which I find kind of weird. So I guess the the relationship between Jihad and Tramurai is one sided. So okay, let me get this straight. This is how I see. This is how I see it. So it's it's a parallel the the relationship between Tramurai and Jihad and Enkidu and Tramurai. So Tramurai wants to be Jihad's friend. He he you know he's serving him all this stuff. He's like his biggest simp, and he's still like that. Until this very day, like the very present day of Tower of God, he's always like that. He's always supporting Jihad. But I don't think Jihad has the same respect for him. And Enkidu is doing the same thing. So it's like a food chain. Enkidu is a small shit. Tramurai is a middle shit. And Jihad is a big shit. And yeah. So Enkidu is doing the same thing here. He He's doing all this stuff for Tramurai. But Tramurai will never fully like see him as... As as a, a person, you know, as like an equal, and he will never see him as equal, an equal footing, you know. So it's kind of kind of like parallels going on here. But anyway, Gusting is invited, and he also says that he he also like already knows like kind of what's going on here. Tramrai is doing this just to please his woman. So we get back into like where Tramrai is sitting, and he's like he wants everyone to know that he got married to Amy Yu. So Tramrai. I mean, he's not really showing his feelings here. He's kind of being stoic, but I think deep down inside, like he really, he really does genuinely love this woman. I mean, obviously more than Enkidu. So this is where the narrator starts to get like really cryptic. So it's kind of setting up Amy Yu's to like cause a lot of shit to go down. So Amy Yu's, I mean, she seems like uh, you see her hugging uh, uh, Lee Rang. And like saying, "Ooh, uh, Kun Edwan and Han, you guys are here." Like, yeah, I mean, she's all buddy buddies with these guys. She's she's really close with all these guys. So, I think she knows what she's doing. She she's not dumb. She knows exactly what she's doing, and I think she's scheming. She is scheming. I mean, it's already been foreshadowed. She's texting people from outside the fucking tower. How much bigger of a red flag can that be? You don't know what's outside the tower. I mean. Who came outside the tower? Enryu came outside of the fucking tower. Uh, what's his name? Phantom Minium came outside of the tower. These fucking strange and powerful entities are out there. So I don't, I don't know why you would trust a woman who is going to be, like just blatantly be be messaging these people outside the tower, and but she's not going to tell you who it is. Like, well, come on, guys, that's so fucking stupid. So before I give my thoughts, let me read out what the narrator is saying so like we can get some context here. So I'm going to read this quote like word by word, but like, you know, in the in translation. So like it, it could be different if anyone else is reading this from different translations. So I must start. As she, the one who is expected to be the main protagonist of the party, is about to make the declaration that will cause the party and Tramrai to collapse. And that declaration will become one of the blades that will tear everyone present there. So I like it's already set up that Amy Hughes is gonna do some shit. She she she's very cunning. She looks very cunning. From the little I've seen of her, like hundred percent don't trust her. Like Traumarai, I think Traumarai's intentions are pure. Uh Enkidu's intentions are pure. Everybody here looks like they they are just genuinely all all happy and they don't have any ulterior motives this amy Hughes is the only one who looks like she's gonna do some crazy shit so i am guessing this is the beginning of that incident that split people apart and the narrator says it is one of those blades that did this so i'm thinking she she is the main like catalyst to splitting these guys apart and Enkidu is gonna do something out of spite, like out of revenge, because she hurt Tramurai to get revenge, you know, to, to kill her or something, you know? I think Enkidu's gonna kill her, and he's gonna be the other blade that tears everyone apart. Because, I mean, remember in that flashback, that flashback we, we first saw that I said that Tramurai is a tranny, and I put that in the thumbnail and the title, that, uh, it's Gustang and Tramrai, they're together. And Gustang is saying that Tramrai that did this with that monster. And, you know, Tramrai's all depressed. And he's like, he wants to forget all these memories. So, I think Enkidu 
is gonna kill this stupid girl on Traumai's behalf, but Traumai does not approve. He's like, what are you doing? I did not tell you to kill this girl. And he's in the, he's still in love. Traumai's still in love with her. And he's upset now that Enkidu killed her. He's gonna lock him up for killing his bride, even though she fucked him over. And I think Enkidu's gonna be doing this out of Traumai. He's gonna be, be acting for his own good. He's looking after his friend. He wants the best for his friend. And it's just not gonna work, because Traumai doesn't work that way. Traumai does not really think these things through. So, how do I think uh, Amuse is gonna do this? Well, I think there's a strong possibility that she is gonna frame Enkidu for something, because she does not like Enkidu. And he is the, one of the closest people of Traumarai right now. Like, like he's always with him. So I think she is going to frame him on something. And Traumarai is going to be conflicted whether to believe him or not. And since she has like connections outside the tower. And she has, uh, I don't know, Traumarai's trust. She can manipulate the situation uh, to accurately depict Enkidu doing something that Traumarai does not like. Or that, that makes Enkidu look very bad. Remember, she also said that she wanted to see all of Traumarai's friends. So, I think she wanted everyone to be there, so this could be more, like, there could be more drama. There could be more witnesses. So, that's another thing. You gotta, with these women, just women in general, you gotta read them between the lines. Because when they say shit, it has more than one definition, most of the time. It has more than one meaning, and... Yeah, does she, this this girl, man, I mean, that's how you really know sort of right women, because this is very accurate. This is 100% spot on. I can't wait. I can't wait to see what he's cooking up next chapter, because, man, if this boils down to what I think it's boiling down into, with this, this Amy Hughes just being a mastermind manipulator, man, this is, uh, yeah, that's how you... And uh, I don't know if he's gone through heartbreaks or has dealt with bitches like this, but... Spot on, SIU. Spot on. So, yeah, I mean, the obvious thing, what SIU, or kind of like, in, in general, what a story would want to trick you into believing is that, given the context we were, we were seeing that from the very beginning of this chapter, kind of like in the middle, where it says that Enkidu did not like uh, Amy Yu's, you're going to think right away, ooh, Enkidu's going to kill Amy Yu's. Enkidu, Enkidu's going to try to find a way to get rid of her. Itch is not is not really looking like that. It's looking like Amy Hughes is gonna do fucked up shit, and she uh, she is gonna be just causing problems. And she sees Enkidu as a problem because he sees through her bullshit. And Enkidu is trying to like talk Traumari out of this, so she's gonna have to do something to get rid of Enkidu as well. And what is Amy Hughes gonna get out of causing all of, all this drama and all these problems? Well uh drama women love drama oh my god look at mashini mashini loves drama she has all this stuff going on like giving bomb leviathan acting behind the scenes you know, being a princess of jihad and still betraying the, the lopabia army and jihad's army oh my god they love drama they love the bloodshed so that might very well be it i mean she's giving those kind of vibes to me uh maybe you seems like she's someone who, who would love to see people just get up all in arms and fucking throw a big pissy fit about something you know maybe rachel is her child uh maybe she's texting some guy some irregular from outside the tower she's gonna get something out of trauma eye and she's gonna betray him ditch him go with that guy outside the tower have rachel with him and Rachel is going to be the next cunt bitch that takes over this girl's personality. Now, I think that is a very high probability, honestly. <laughs> let's, let's be honest here. Rachel, uh, these, these women are very deceptive. If there's anything in Tower of God that's been shown, it's it, women are problems. So one thing I am questioning is if a muse has like immortality as well. So, okay. Traumarai gave Enkidu immortality. He requested that administrator to bless him with immortality. Is he going to do the same for a woman he loves? That would make sense, right? Why, why doesn't he do the same for Amy Yu's? Um, I, I don't really get it. So is it because he sees Enkidu as a project? Just like his personal projects that he makes these modifications on and, you know, does these weird things too? Or like, I don't get it. Uh, I don't get it. I, I mean, it only makes sense that Traumarai asked for immortality for his bride. Uh, if he loves her, if he really does love her, which I think he does. I think he's blinded by love. Uh, or maybe that's that specific uh, 
rules for administrators. Like, since I could do is not really a person, he's kind of like an artificial being. Uh, like, he gets to be immortal. So, I don't know. I don't fucking know. I would think Traumari would try to get immortality for her too, but uh, we don't even know. So that's some that's some food for thought right there. So yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things. I'm probably it's probably me. I, pro I probably don't understand the, the Traumari character fully. Like I don't get why he is all of a sudden like really happy with Enkidu being a, a person when nothing changed other than him gaining a physical body. Uh, I, I don't I don't get it. Maybe, yeah, like I said, it's just me. I don't understand the character of Traumari, or if there's still stuff that SAU needs to unravel, which I hope is the case, because, man, this stuff is very confusing. Very, very confusing. So, yeah, guys, I think I went over all my theories and my thoughts for this chapter. This is a long-ass review. I think it's the longest review I've ever done. It's because there's so much to talk about. And we, we were really in need of a lore chapter. It's been way too long, and this is, this is it. This is the lore. I mean can't really get better than this so yeah guys let me know what you guys think of this chapter i hope i covered all my theories i, I did a, a quick like skim through the chapter and i think i covered everything so yeah what do you think is trauma i gonna get betrayed do you think enkidu is gonna be the one betraying i don't think it is it's not where the story looks like it's leading to maybe the narrator is purposely deceiving us i don't know but from what I'm seeing, Enkidu is 100% loyal to Traumari, and he, he just wants what's best for him. And uh, think about the, the contacts to the outside tower. This girl, she is messaging some guy or someone, some person from outside of the tower. And very shady stuff. She She's doing it with people knowing, but she's not telling them who it is. So, like, she's not trying to hide it. It doesn't look like, because Enkidu did say everybody knows about it. But she's just being very cryptic about it. So it's very, very strange. Very fucking strange. So yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed this review. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. And I will see you next time.